Hey everybody, welcome to the 1947 Rise podcast. A podcast that helps India-born, US-trained Indians get integrated into the Indian technology ecosystem and inspires them to move back to India to build massive tech companies and or help enable the tech ecosystem. We do this by interviewing India-born, US-trained Indians who have moved back to India and built massive tech companies themselves and or helped enable the tech ecosystem. Awesome. I'm excited to have Dhruv Gupta on the 1947 Rise podcast today. All right. Thanks, Shiv. Dhruv is the co-founder and CEO of Orange Health. Orange Health is India's fastest diagnostic lab. Customers can get tested at home in 60 minutes. It is backed by funds like Excel, General Catalyst, and other top funds. Prior to founding Orange Health, Dhruv started and sold three companies successfully in India. Before that, he studied and worked in the US. Dhruv, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Great, great to be here. And uh, you know, the the description is more glorious than it really is. But uh, great, great to hear and great to great to be chatting with you. Awesome. Let's dive right into it. Uh, Dhruv, would love to learn about your you know, journey so far, your story. Maybe we can start from the early years, uh, early years in India, and then you ended up moving back to, you ended up moving to US, uh, your time in US, and, and what made you move back to India? Sure. So uh, I grew up in Calcutta. And I did, I did most of my schooling there. I spent a few years growing up in the Middle East, actually, when my, my family moved there. Um, but like post-schooling, I ended up going to uh, the US for my undergrad. I uh, did my computer science engineering from Michigan. And then I worked in tech and consulting for a few years. But, uh, but you know, I always had this uh, entrepreneurial itch. And uh, this is actually, I guess, most, most people in my family are entrepreneurs. So it was like a natural thing to grow up with that itch and, you know, always wanted to like figure out what to do with, um, you know, tried a bunch of ideas, but finally, like at at one point, like three, four years post-college, I started this, uh, this company called DesiMartini.com, which uh, was me and my Michigan college roommate, Vivek. Um, We started this idea, I mean, uh, and that, that sort of got us going into this. Right. So that, that was sort of the, the journey to the US. Um, around 2007 is when I started thinking about moving back to India because, you know, um, you know, despite spending many years there, uh, despite the excitement and opportunity of being there, I realized that there were some things in my life that were very important to me, which is, I felt like I was, I was missing out on. Uh, one was being closer to family. And over time, I realized that I find more, uh, more joy in seeing my family seeing my family more often than I did. Um, second was also the India growth opportunity. You know, India was at the cusp of the digital revolution. Uh, and I felt like it was the right time to make this shift back. Now, whether that was the right time then, 2007, or whether that's that's like 10 years later or now, it's very hard to really say. Uh, but, you know, one, one of my learnings from that has just been that, uh, that India is so large that it just takes time for things to develop. Uh, you know, you just have to make a choice and, you know, do that. Uh, but the other thing also about life in India was that, uh, you know, if for those of us who are part of India one, and this is, you know, we'd say the top 100 million Indians, uh, the quality of life in India can be pretty good, you know, close to family, strong infrastructure. If you set it up correctly, it can be a great quality of life. Um, so, you know, it's some of these factors which kind of drove my decision to come back. Uh, coincidentally, also while I was while I was doing, going through this thought process, um, my first company, AC Martini, got an acquisition offer by by an Indian company, and it was an opportunity for me to like kind of move back. So that that helped. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's really what sort of um, led to my moving back to India. Got it. And how was the journey initially uh, after the move back to India? Sure. Uh, I think moving back to India, especially after having lived there for a number of years, is is hard. 
uh, you know, come come from a place like the US, where you know, if you if you've lived there for a bunch of years, it's a big shift in terms of infrastructure, process, and the cultural paradigm, right? Um, I've moved many times in my life, and I just found that when you make such a large tectonic shift in your life, um, and if you want to be successful at that, you kind of have to you have to figure out how to cushion it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and how to like reduce the the impact of the change. Uh, so you know, for me personally, and there, there are three big big tectonic shifts in life, right? One is uh, your uh, personal status in case you decide to get married. Two is like. Uh, is work change and then three is is shifting i was doing i was doing all, almost all three around the same time uh, but like work wise while uh, like i don't think my company desi martini was acquired by hindustan times uh, hg media's digital hub i still got to work on what i started so kind of cushioned the move professionally uh, you know it, it gave me a significant exposure to the indian market um, and personally, like I said, I was uh, I was moving and you know I was, it was uh, moving to a city where which was new for me. I never actually lived in Delhi. I grew up in Calcutta. Uh, but the fact that my fiance was there, a bunch of college friends there, that kind of helped uh, in just you know making it easier. So I think I think those those were key factors to like make it easy. Uh, and, and the last but not the least was also uh, sort of making peace with the decision. Um, you know, many people who move back, I don't want to say many, but some people who move back have this, you know, you kind of have this like uh, buyer's remorse, right? Where they say, hey, should I have really done it or not done it? But you kind of have to be clear uh, and that helps it. If, if you really think through why you're doing this, um, you know, and it's got, it's got, if it's a personal enough reason, deep, something deep enough, then, you know, you kind of make, make peace with it more easily for the challenges that come with moving. Yeah, and uh, so Dhruv, after your first company, uh, you started two other companies, right? Before uh, founding the current uh, company that you have, which is Orange Health. Uh, maybe you can talk about those two companies and then we'll uh, dive into Orange Health. Sure, sure. So uh, my second company was uh, was a company called uh, GKB Online. Uh, GKB Online was a, was an e-commerce platform and partnership with a retail chain called GKB Opticons. Uh, that effectively think of it like this is started right around the same time as Let's Cut. Uh, what I saw in the US was that you know while Amazon existed, uh, companies like Warby Parker and others were thriving, and uh, you know it's very hard. Uh, one of my insights there was it's very hard for a general e-commerce player to effectively get into certain certain uh, certain specific sectors of, of e-commerce uh, especially when it's a when it's a uh, sort of a specific supply chain or a manufacturing process and you know I, eyewear happens to be just one first space like that uh, so that was one and then the second one was a company called Fito. Fito was uh, so again Fito when I moved back to India let me take one step back when I was in the US I kind of got into fitness and uh, you know big culture then uh, as i moved back to india i saw i saw the paucity of it here uh, not just the paucity of it in, uh, like of people being fit but also just lack of lack of awareness and as a result you know i mean we're also the the chronic capital of the world highest highest number of uh, chronic diseases like heart disease diabetes etc and so that kind of uh, spawned the idea of fit which effectively provided personalized nutrition and exercise programs to people uh, to help them manage their lifestyle diseases like obesity, diabetes, heart disease, etc. A lot of these are, are basically around like just eating right and, and exercising and sleeping right, things like that. Right? And if you get the right advice, it can be very powerful. Um, that company grew well. It, it served about a half a million users. And then uh, 2015, that company was, uh, was acquired by Fracto. Uh, Fracto at that point had raised $100 million. They were basically looking to, to build into all parts of healthcare and, uh, you know, you know, kind of, and, you know, strategically their thoughts and our thoughts aligned. So that kind of led to, uh, led to that. Got it. And, and what's the founding story of Orange Health? And how did you come up with the name Orange Health? Uh, okay. So, uh, you know, while... So during my journey at Fito and then at Practo, uh, 
you know, had a bunch of insights into, into the healthcare market, right? Uh, one, of course, the healthcare market is growing, but two, uh, and, you know, if there's a lot of technology-based products that, that have come up, right? A lot of e-pharmacy, telemedicine, and, you know, a bunch of other spaces. But uh, what we found is that, uh, you know, even today, and when I say today, this is 2019, mm-hmm. uh, at that point in time, if you want to get tested, right, uh, it's about 5.30 right now. Your doctor says, hey, you know, Shiva, you need to, you need, you need to get a dengue test done, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's not easy for you to have someone come to your house right now. And dengue is a serious, is a serious illness, right? If you have dengue, you're almost a four and a half percent mortality rate. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, creates a lot of anxiety and you want to get tested soon, right? In that moment, there's no one coming over. What people end up doing is they land up going to the neighborhood lab. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and in 2019 or even 2020 or today, uh, anything and everything can come to your house. You want food, it'll be there in yep. 30 minutes. You want groceries, it'll be there in 10 minutes. You want a home loan, like in the next couple of hours, there'll be a guy at your home selling your home loan, right? But like you want to get tested, it's just not possible. You could talk to a doctor in 15 minutes on WhatsApp and you have the telemedicine platforms, you get medicines from Swiggy, Dunzo, whatever, right? Uh, and that's something just, so important. Yes, yes, right. And it's just, there's just no way. In fact, in 2019, uh, my family, my wife and daughter had dengue and this experience happened exactly with us, right? Like in, when you have dengue, you have to get your platelets tested. Mm-hmm. Every alternate, I would drag them to the neighborhood lab, uh, you know, super unwell, but in the middle of them, taking them to a lab, exposing them to all kinds of infection, they're unwell, you know, and like, and then it's like a black hole with labs as well, right? When you, when you uh, order... Uh, once you've given a sample, you hope that the guy would, he said, okay, they, they'll, you're supposed to be there by 5 p.m. But are they really going to be there? They're not going to be there. What's the status? You have to follow up. You have to call. I mean, it's, it's, it's like the old days. Yeah. Um, and it just felt like this could be made better. That's really what led to the idea of one child, to be honest. Got it. Uh, and uh, so, Dhruv, you know, it's been, uh, I think, a little over two years uh, since you founded uh, Orange Health. Uh, where are you today? And what's the magical outcome that you hold uh, for Orange Health? Um, okay, great question. Magical outcome will come to. Um, so in the last two years, you know, we've, uh, we started with as a, as a concept. Uh, we launched around December 2020. It's today. It's about 18, 18, 19 months since we've since we've gone live. Um, as of today, we're now in two cities: we're in Delhi and across NCR, in Bangalore and across NCR. We've served uh, over a million customers. Uh, we have over a thousand doctors that now uh, you know support and partner with Orange Health, uh, and ABLI CMR. Uh, you know, we're, we've over the last 18 months, I would say you know, a little bit of hard work, a little bit of luck. Uh, mm-hmm. We've been, uh, we've, we've, we're fortunate to have built a reasonable uh, product, something that, that consumers like. We're actually, uh, we're actually India's highest rated diagnostic lab today. Uh, we rated 4.9 by, I don't know, like six, 7,000 people across the country. Uh, mm-hmm. And this is not something you, you hear of a diagnostic lab. You know, people, people in our reviews, people say things like, oh, it was a wonderful experience. I mean, no one ever said, like getting pricked was a wonderful experience. Yeah. Uh, so it sort of gives us goosebumps when we see that. Uh, but that's that's where we are in this journey. Um, in terms of what our vision is, you know, we, as of today, are clearly focused on the diagnostic market. Uh, we see that there's a large opportunity to actually build something meaningful there. So very clearly focused, very fo- uh, you know, we've just seen that like, uh, the greatest companies in the world, you know, built the same thing for many years. Amazon did e-com for 10 years. Uh, Facebook did newsfeed for 10 years. Google did search and ads just for 10 years. And once they figured that game out completely, did they actually go and like do a bunch of other things. Uh, so we want to learn from some of these guys where, you know, that if, there is a, if there is a large market opportunity, go deep, build it yeah. out, make it worth it, uh, make it large, and then, then go beyond that. Love it. Uh, and Dhruv, 
you know, what's a, a superpower that you see in your co-founder, which he may know, he may not know about it. The superpower that I see in my co-founder. Um, I think he knows about most of his superpowers, but, <laughs> but I think, uh, you know, I, I'll say this, that, uh, that he's, he's a great, uh, he's a great salesman. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, he also has a very, uh, innate capability of, uh, being able to look way ahead. Yeah. Right. Uh, something I value a lot, uh, both of those. And, uh, but yeah, I don't know if he doesn't know that. He does know that. <laughs> Got it. And uh, so, Dhruv, you know, you've been building companies and, uh, and you've spent uh, many years, uh, particularly in uh, healthcare uh, ecosystem. If you were to unpack, uh, you know, the, the current, or I would say the evolution of uh, healthcare tech in India. Uh, let's say you're unpacking this to a 10 year old. Where were we, where, where are we right now? And where do you see us going in the next, let's say 10, 15 years? Sure. So uh, I would say phase one of the healthcare tech journey in India was just sort of information aggregation. Mm -hmm. right? Saying that, look, uh, you want a provider, I'll, here's where you can find providers. Right? Uh, the second version of that has been uh, kind of the e-com play, saying yeah. that marketplace model, right? that, hey, I'm going to, you need a provider, I'm going to make it easy for you to, to get something for the, from the provider. Maybe I'll ship you the medicine, maybe I'll, I'll book you the appointment, maybe I have a platform which which actually enables you to uh, to like talk to the doctor on my on my system, or like you want a blood test, I'll 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 be the marketplace that'll send someone to your house and it'll get it'll get done by your lab, uh, mm -hmm. by a third party lab. Today we're in a, in phase three, which is where companies are going beyond information and marketplace model, where they're actually building full stack companies, where com the complete service is getting built ground up by tech enabled companies. I mean, Orange Health being just one of them. And, you know, where companies are now making deeper plays, you know, and diagnostics is just one such example, but uh, you're seeing hardware innovation, a lot of hardware health, healthcare companies coming up in India. We're seeing a lot of digital enabled clinics coming up in India. Come, clinics that, that, you know, these are, these are digital pla uh, companies that aren't saying that, hey, the doctor, someone else, they say, this is our doctor. Right, uh, kind of building like Apollo clinics digital, you know, yeah. in this specific place. So as the healthcare market is also evolving, you know, these are companies which are focusing on specific niche areas. You know, a uh, bunch of companies that are doing uh, diabetes management, for example, right, yeah. chronic disease management. A uh, bunch of companies that are focusing on women's health, reproductive yeah. health, mental health, you know, sexual health. So mm -hmm. you know. Uh, even on the pharmaceutical side, we're starting to see a lot of companies now come up with their own pharmaceutical products, right? Uh, branded under under their own, whether it's private label or not, right? But uh, but we're seeing stronger plays with deeper conviction, uh, which allow which act, these are actually the, I wouldn't even call them just tech companies. These are actually digital enabled healthcare companies. These are these are full stack healthcare companies. I mean, we think of Orange Health as a healthcare company more than a tech company. Tech is merely an infra that enables us to potentially build something more scalable, uh, but mm -hmm. we're really a healthcare company. And so, so is phase three of all these companies. Got it. And uh, while building uh, Orange Health, what's something that you know now you wish uh, you knew it earlier? Uh, good question. Um, you know, I think for for me and my co-founder, where we've been lucky is that we actually spent 10 years in healthcare before we actually got into this space. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I could tell you a lot of things I, I learned in my first few companies because those were spaces that I hadn't spent time. But here I would say 
broadly speaking, there haven't been any significant surprises. I mean, one from a company building perspective, I have a lot of background. Yeah. Uh, you know, from a, from a healthcare perspective, spend a lot of time in this space. So, you know, I, I can't say that there have been any particularly surprising things uh, that we found. Uh, I think probably the most surprising one has been uh, the reception that we found from consumers, to be honest. Of course, we were hopeful of that, uh, but actually, you know, people loving the service that much, that's, that's been a surprise. Uh, I'll say that. You know, Got it. One. Yeah. And uh, Dhruv, like, you know, what, what keeps you going uh, in general? Sure. So, uh, you know, having, having built a few companies, having worked a bunch, bunch of other organizations, you know, even exited a couple of them, uh, you, you, I've actually had the, had the opportunity to ponder this question. Right, mm-hmm. uh, and what I what I've found, and I think you know, everyone finds meaning in something different. Uh, what I found keeps me going is the fact that I get to build something on a daily basis that makes human lives better. Yeah. Um, it's it's really I find that motivating, right? I find that meaningful to like wake up to every day. You know, like before the conversation, we were just chatting, right? Like I was saying, it's a marathon. Um, I think of it less as a battle, more as a more as a sort of uh, like a like a meaningful thing to do in your life, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, if you could, if you know, and, and in fact, all the companies that, that I've built at some level, we felt I, I felt that you know they were something that 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 made lives better. In fact, DC Martin, for example, was actually first built as a as a dating platform for Indians, and I and I'm a very strong believer in in the in the internet being a, a great way to connect people across right uh, to orange health today where we're just saying that hey you know when you're sick stay home we'll show up and we'll, we'll get you reports fast right mm-hmm. uh, so yeah that that's really what i find motivating and you know it has been a long journey so far and still you have a long long way to go uh, as an entrepreneur you know, there's a lot of highs and lows, right? Uh, while building uh, drove, you know, when things are not going in the right direction, uh, are there any frameworks uh, that you use to bring uh, yourself back on track? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've had more experience to figure out about what those are. Um, mm-hmm. I, a few things that I, that I do is I actually write to clear my mind. Yeah, I find that uh, uh, when you find something overwhelming, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's actually a fear outcome. And um, there's something called the fear setting exercise, which I came across you know, five, seven years back. I found that to be a powerful exercise where you actually write down your fears and you write down the repercussions of, of that. And, the, and you actually pen down the, the actual chance of that of that coming through and the potential solutions for it once you're done with the exercise you realize that most of the fears are counted yeah uh, right uh, i uh, besides that what i also do is i, I like to meditate uh, helps me slow down my mind and just like okay, yeah. gives me a little clarity but i think on a, on a regular basis i would say meditation and, and writing uh, those are those are two extremely powerful tools that uh, you know help have helped me a lot uh, in overcoming any kind of like overwhelming, unfocused, you know, situation mm-hmm. that, that yeah. I faced. Yeah, I think both of them are very powerful. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, one more thing I'll just add there is also, uh, I think like having a support network is very valuable. And you just need a couple of people really. I mean, it could be a spouse, could be a friend, could be a sibling, could be a parent, uh, could be anyone, right? Could be other entrepreneurs. Uh, talking to other people in your, uh, you know, who who can empathize with with what you're going through, uh, mm-hmm. that's also very powerful. Yeah, right. uh, yeah, and uh, having the right support system, uh, writing and meditation, all three are very uh, powerful frameworks. And uh, Dhruv, you know, just for like you know for for a few few minutes, let's say Orange Health is. Uh, is not in the picture. 
and money and attention are not needed anymore, what would you work on? I would write. Yeah. Yeah, I would write. I would, I would share, uh, at least share my learnings. I'd probably do something like what you're doing. Uh, you know, talk to, talk to people across, uh, you know, put that, you know, learn from them and use that to share, uh, share with other people. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I had, I probably do something like that. <laughs> I love it. Uh, in fact, so, you know, I was doing this exercise. So, so you're well. living the life I want to live. <laughs> uh, but Dhruv, and, uh, you know, like over the years, was there like, an inflection point, or I would say a turning point uh, that really kind of like, you know, changed your life in a good way. It could be, you know, I'm just throwing a few things out there. It could be a book that you read or, or a quote that you read or, or a mentor that advised you on something. I mean, I can't say I've had like a, like an apple falling on my head moment, you know, like an epiphanous moment in my life. Yeah. Um, I would say a lot of things in my life have been have kind of built on top of each other mm -hmm. um i think two things would i would say were, were pivotal one like i said growing up in an entrepreneurial uh like home ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, was a big driving factor two i think the the choice to give up my like come cushy corporate job and uh, move back to india you know, giving up my work visa uh, mm -hmm. was surely one that like just cut all ties with the past, and I knew I had to figure that figure it out in this new world. Yeah. Um, it was tumultuous, I'll be honest, mm -hmm. uh, but but I think those those were probably like a couple of influences and decisions that that kind of led to where where I am today. But then from there, it's just I think it's just one thing built on top of each other. You know, some some take you forward, some don't. Uh, but you learn from them at least. Yeah. And uh, Dhruv, you know, I know you or we know you because of uh, a tech entrepreneur now building Orange Health. What do your friends know you for? Who are you outside of work? Um, what do my friends know me for? A um, couple of things, I guess. One, uh, my friends know me for being stable. Yeah, you I seem like, like you, you made me stable right now. <laughs> <laughs> Being like emotionally stable. You, you made me calm. <laughs> yeah, all right, man. <laughs> uh, the other thing I think uh, that stands out is uh, I'm known to be a fitness geek, right? Mm -hmm. So care a lot about like uh, working out, which is generally what I'm eating. Uh, and, and, in the last few years, I wanted to go to bed early. I don't yeah. value my sleep. Uh, just I find that among all the things uh, that I do, if I get enough sleep, things just go better in my day. So you know, like, <laughs> I, I, like it's it's kind of an odd thing, but you know, my friends find that funny. So. <laughs> and then, uh, how does your workout look like? What does my workout look like? Yeah. Um, that's, that's also evolved over many years. Uh, I, I work out, I mean, I get some exercise. The, for me, the idea of, of, uh, of working out is more about getting some physical activity. I feel like, uh, no, I feel like the human body is, is meant to get physical activity. Uh, mm -hmm. We have sedentary jobs. Um, yeah. So, you know, like getting an hour of like some kind of physical activity, whether, whether that's a sport, whether that's like weights, whether that's yoga, yeah. whatever right um, currently my 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 workout is is a mix of yoga and weights mm -hmm. um, so a couple of days of yoga uh, helps with like flexibility just overall like suppleness just you know keeps you uh, gives gives you a good break otherwise it's it's uh, lifting lifting weights in the gym um, yeah. and then occasionally if i get a chance i do i do like to uh, pick up pick up uh, my squash racket or go swimming but mm -hmm. uh, but that that's that's been a little bit rare last couple of years of like the early early stages of company building are, are like very demanding and mm -hmm. uh, so you kind of have to optimize a few things there 
And uh, so it's just, it's, it's been just that one hour of physical activity, but hope that maybe, maybe soon I'll, I'll get to a point where I get back to sports because I miss that. You know, I mean, and you, you being a sports guy would know that. Yeah, you should totally uh, connect with Ashish of uh, In Money. He's all about squash. I don't know if you, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dhruv, uh, it was fun, man. Really, really appreciate it for Thank you. you taking the time and uh, and just really, you know, walking us through your journey uh, so far. And, and I'm personally excited about you uh, and, you know, your team, your co-founders uh, for Orange Health, uh, you know, and, and, and the future of Orange Health. Thank you. Really appreciate meeting you. It's been, uh, you know, great to hear about all the stuff that you've been up to and what you're doing today. Clearly, like I said, you're living the life I want to be living. So uh, <laughs> something for me to aspire for. Uh, but also, man, great, uh, great meeting you. Likewise. <laughs>